Hi everyone, welcome to episode 3. So uh, today we're going to be implementing a little enemy to chase the player around. So let's create a new capsule and uh, going to create a new material for this. Just duplicate the player material, call that enemy, assign it and give it a nice evil shade of green and rename the capsule to enemy as well. And let's create an enemy script too. So C sharp script enemy, and uh, we can just go ahead and assign that to our enemy game object. So uh, for pathfinding, we're going to be using Unity's nav mesh system. So uh, let us go window and open up the navigation uh, thingy over here, and uh, let's go onto our ground plane. And we want to set this to navigation static. So uh, it's got a navigation area tag of walkable. So if we now bake the nav mesh, we've got this blue area in which our character can walk. Um, let us just make a little cube. This can just be a little test obstacle. Put it over here, maybe. Um, just bring it down. Can make a material for that too. Just call it obstacle. Drag it in. Um, okay, doesn't really matter what color it is, I suppose. And if we go back into navigation, we can set that to navigation static as well. And we can say this is not walkable. So if we rebake, you can see that it's been uh, cut out of the walkable area. Okay, so now what we're going to do is go into the enemy and uh, we're going to give it a nav mesh agent component. And we'll go into our enemy script now. And uh, let's first of all get a reference to that nav mesh agent component. So we can say nav mesh agent, and this uh, we can call our pathfinder, since it is going to be handling all of our pathfinding for us. And in the start method, we can say that pathfinder is equal to get component type of nav mesh agent. Um, as I always keep harping on about, if we assume that this is attached to this game object, we should really have a require component type of nav mesh agent. Okay, so now that we've uh, got a reference to our pathfinder, we need to know where the player is so that we can chase the player. So let's create a transform here called target. And uh, we're going to assume that our player has got the player tag assigned to it. So we'll say target is equal to game object dot find game object with tag player. And we want to get the transform component of that. So then in the update method, we can say pathfinder dot set destination and we want to set our destination to the player's destination, which is target.position. Okay, so if we go into Unity, go into the player, and assign the player tag so that it can be found by the enemy. Let's, uh, let's try this out. Press play. And you can see the enemy is chasing us around, and most importantly, avoiding that obstacle over there. Great. That's nice. Um, so one thing to uh, always keep in mind is the performance of our game. So set uh, destination, it's having to recalculate the path um, every frame, which is potentially going to be quite expensive, especially when we've got lots of obstacles and lots of enemies. So let's, uh, let's have this update, not every frame, but uh, sort of on a fixed timer. So uh, we can create an I enumerator called something like update path. And uh, let's say we've got a float. Um, we could call this the refresh rate of our path. I'll set that equal to say, for example, one second. Um, then we can say while the target is not equal to null. So while there is a target, um, we want to first of all get the target's position, so vector three target position, and uh, I'm just going to set this equal to a new vector three so that I can uh, 
make sure that it's on the ground. So um, say target.position.x and then for the y I'll put zero and then target uh, dot position dot z. Um, then we can say, well, we can actually just copy this, or rather cut it, put it in there, and instead of using target dot position, we'll use the target position uh, variable we just created. And then um, we can say yield return new wait for seconds and pass in our refresh rate. Uh, if I can just type that. All right. So this will uh, once once we call the update path um, coroutine, then uh, it will go through this loop, and it will repeat this loop every refresh rate, which is one second, as we've said it here. So in the start method, we can just say start coroutine, and we want to say update path. All right. Um, let me just delete all this white space in my update method. So let's see if that's working. Let's play, and it is working, but the uh, the refresh rate is very very noticeable. Um, so let's let's tone that down a little bit. Maybe put it at um, a quarter of a second. So now, if we run. Yep, it uh, it looks pretty much instant the uh, reaction of the enemy, and yet it's only being recalculated uh, four times every second rather than uh, you know potentially sixty if your if your game is running at sixty frames a second. So that is a lot better performance wise. Now, of course, if um, if I just play this again, you can see that. Currently, shooting the enemy does absolutely nothing to deter it. So uh, what we want to do is go into our projectile class and uh, let's start setting up some collision detection. So we're going to use raycasts. Um, essentially, before uh, we call transform.translate, we'll cast a ray out um, with the distance that we're about to move and see if it hits anything. So let's first calculate in a float the distance that we're going to move this frame. So you uh, can just call that move distance, I guess. And that will just simply be equal to speed multiplied by time dot delta time. And uh, I'm just going to reuse this variable over here um, instead of writing that out again. OK. Um, and then we can uh, call a method that we'll create called something like check collisions. And we'll pass it in our move distance. OK, let's create check collisions over here. Void uh, check collisions um, float move distance. OK, so of course, um, if you're wondering why I'm creating a new method for this instead of just doing it inside of the update method, um, it, it's really just a stylistic choice. I, I prefer to keep my update methods as lean as possible. They're just sort of like a command center, and then it sort of calls all the different methods so you can uh, sort of easily see what's happening without having this huge bloated mess in your update method, um, just how I prefer to work. So in check collisions, uh, let's start off by defining a ray. It's equal to a new ray. And we need to give it a starting position and a direction. So that will be the position of the projectile and the uh, the forward direction of the projectile. OK, so we also we also want to get some information um, returned about the object it hits. So we'll create a raycast hit called hit. And then we'll probably also want to define a public layer mask um, up here, just called something like collision mask, so that we can uh, determine which objects, or rather which layers, um, this projectile will collide with. And then we can go back down and perform our actual raycast. So if physics.raycast, and uh, we'll give it our ray, we'll pass out our raycast hit variable uh, for the distance, that would be the move distance. And we want to give it our layer mask as well. So that's our collision mask. And uh, finally, there's this uh, new thing as of Unity 5.2, I believe, 
um, query trigger interaction, which allows us to set whether or not this will, uh, will collide with trigger colliders. And we do want it to collide with trigger colliders, so we'll say query trigger interaction dot collide. All right. So if it's hitting that object, um, let us uh, let's actually I like creating new methods. Let's create a new method void on hit object, and this will take in a uh, a raycast hit hit for the information about the object. So if we hit something, we can call this on hit object and pass in the hit variable. Okay, so in here, what we can do, um, what we'll want to end up doing is saying game object dot destroy this game object so that we destroy the projectile once it's uh, hit the object. Um, but first, we uh, we need to register that hit, and uh, we're actually going to be doing that in the next video. But for now. Let's just check that this is working and print out hit dot collider dot game object dot name. Okay, so if we go here, um, and I'll, let me just show you. Uh, at the moment, the um, the enemy is really pushing us around. If uh, if we just stand still, so what I actually want to do is. Um, set his capsule collider to is trigger such that he uh, doesn't collide with our player at all and um, the reason I'm doing this is, is really just because when we have lots of enemies it's going to be very annoying if uh, they're all sort of jostling us around so uh, that's why our raycast must uh, have the um, the query trigger interaction dot collide so that it can still register hits with a trigger collider um, so yeah let's uh, let's just open the console here and see if our bullets are colliding with the enemy. I'll shoot it, and they're not, but for very good reason. Um, we, on our uh, on our bullet, we uh, set a collision mask, and at the moment, collision mask is nothing. So, let's create a new layer. Um, we can call this layer enemy, and we'll assign it to the enemy. And then, on the bullet, we can say we want you to collide with enemies. Okay, let's try it out now. Shoot, do -do 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 and as you can see, it's hit the enemy 12 times so far, 18. So yeah, basically the point is that it's working. Cool, so in the next episode, we'll set up a system for objects taking damage, and uh, then we'll be able to actually kill our enemy, so that'll be fun. Um, until then, thanks for watching, cheers.